So it's true that you can get up to around 120 to maybe 130 degrees for your radiant floor system from a heat pump. And the way it's able to get ground temperatures that are around freezing up to that high is, I think the simplest way of thinking about it is, there's heat in the ground, but it's really diffuse. And you have to concentrate it to get it up to the point of 120. And that takes work. You're not actually taking the heat from the ground directly and putting it to your house. Um, the process by which a heat pump heats your home is the, um, there's a fluid that circulates in the ground loop that brings it into a heat exchanger that then uh, boils refrigerant inside a closed system. And once that refrigerant in the heat pump is as a vapor, it can be compressed and that can create usable heat that could then go to hot air or hot water to heat your home. So there's a couple of heat exchange mechanisms. There's a fluid in the ground loop that heats a refrigerant. That can be compressed. Another heat exchange for this goes to hot air or hot water into your house. It's very similar to how many people heat their homes already. The heat's distributed the same way. It works well if you have radiant floor heat. That's optimal. It also can work if you heat your home with a furnace right now, hot air delivery. But if, if the way you heat your home now is by recirculating hot water baseboards, those require a hot water temperature too high for the heat pump to provide that alone. So if you wanted, if, if you're talking about a retrofit and you wanted to use a heat pump and you have baseboard or recirculating hot water, you'd need to also retrofit somehow your heat delivery system as well, which adds another layer of cost and complexity that some people might not be willing